Hi everyone, I'm Katie with Friends of Great Salt Lake and today I'm gonna show you how to assemble your brine shrimp hatch kit. This is a great project because it helps bring the Great Salt Lake ecosystem right into your own home or classroom. I'm just gonna show you how to assemble it using everything that's provided for you in this jar. So let's get started by checking out what we've got in here. The jar is an important component. This is gonna be our container and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a lid and also inside of here you might find a baggie of sand this is gulitic sand from right here on the beach at great salt lake and this is actually for a different experiment so you can go ahead and set this aside for a different project and you can find the instructions for that on our website as well but we've also got in here a baggie of non-iodized salt this is two tablespoons of non-iodized salt if you use iodized salt unfortunately this project won't work so you're going to want to make sure to use non-iodized salt that's what's provided in here you'll use the full baggie you'll also find your brine shrimp eggs which are called cysts and you're not going to want to use all of the eggs that are in this baggie right away you're just going to use a little sprinkle of them to start you'll also find in here a little algae wafer this is going to become what the brine shrimp will eat inside their container the first thing we need to do is pour some water into our jar. The type of water you use is actually really important for the brine shrimp to be able to survive in here. You need to make sure you use dechlorinated tap water or you can also use bottled spring water. So to dechlorinate your tap water, all you have to do is just pour it into a container. You can pour it right into your jar and let it sit out to open overnight to make sure that all of the chlorine evaporates out of there so I have some dechlorinated tap water here and we're gonna pour it in to fill up our jar that's good and then we're going to add in our two tablespoons of non iodized salt once we've added our salt we're gonna need to stir until all of the salt is dissolved in the water it might help if you use water that is slightly warm, not hot. Hot is not gonna be good for the brine shrimp, but slightly warm around 80 degrees will help the salt dissolve and also be just the right temperature for the brine shrimp. Now that our salt is almost entirely dissolved in this water, we're gonna take a Sharpie and we're going to mark the level of the water on the jar so we can make sure that we are adding water as it evaporates so that the brine shrimp have enough water to live in. So just take your Sharpie and you're gonna mark on the side of the jar where the water is. Once we've done that, we're going to take our algae wafer and we're going to crush it up into some smaller pieces and add in just one small piece for now. You can break it, you can crush it, just make sure that you save the pieces because you're going to need to feed some extra pieces to your brine shrimp after they hatch. So you can take a small piece like that and drop it in. And now we're ready to add our brine shrimp cysts into our prepared container. So we're gonna take our baggie of brine shrimp cysts. Again, we're not gonna dump in the entire baggie right away. This is enough brine shrimp cysts to do a few different containers. So we'll just add a little pinch or you can just pour them right in. They're super tiny. And we're just gonna sprinkle them gently into our container. And just like that is all you need. Once you've added your brine shrimp cysts into your container, you'll probably notice that they're mostly floating on the surface. That's perfect. That's exactly what they do here at Great Salt Lake before they're ready to hatch. So you can put your lid back on and make sure it's pretty snug, pretty tight. And you're gonna take your jar and set it next to a really sunny window, or if you don't have a window available, you can just put it somewhere where it's gonna get a lot of bright light, even artificial light is fine. But you're also gonna wanna make sure that your jar stays in an environment where it can be about 70 to 80 degrees. Again, brine shrimp like pretty warm water and will do really well um, if they have enough sunlight and warm 
temperature. And the algae that's in there is also going to grow and help feed them better if it has some sunlight to help it grow as well. So that's all you need to do to assemble your kit. Your brine shrimp cysts should hatch within about two to three days as long as they're in a warm enough environment. If they haven't hatched in that time, try moving it to a warmer place. Once it's been about two or three days, you can look really closely in your jar and check if you see any tiny, pink, wiggly little baby brine shrimp. Those are called nuclei, and they'll start wiggling around inside your jar. And once you see that, that they have hatched, you can um, open up your jar, give it a stir, and add in a little piece of algae wafer every other day after they've hatched. And as they continue growing, they will shed their outside layers, shed their exoskeletons, um, which is called molting, just like a crab or a lobster. And eventually, within about two to three weeks, they'll develop two little black eyes that you can see and that's how you know that they've reached maturity. And you can also check and see if each brine shrimp is a male or a female. One way that you can tell that is by looking for a uh, egg sac on the female or the males also have these grabbers on the tops of their heads. And again, you just want to continue adding in an algae wafer piece every other day. You can also poke holes in the top of your lid to help allow for some airflow and maybe give your jar a stir every day or so. Make sure that you're adding some additional dechlorinated tap water or bottled spring water as you need to to make sure that it stays at that same water level. And that's all you need to do. You have your very own brine shrimp habitat right at your own home or classroom. You can observe um, how they grow and record your observations using the observation log that's included in the instructions for this project. So good luck assembling your brine shrimp hatch kit and we hope you enjoy having a little taste of Salt Lake in your own home or classroom. Bye!